Girl steals parking spot man was waiting for, gets taught an expensive lesson. What should have been a simple outing quickly morphed into a massive display of rudeness. All he could do was stand there, utterly shocked at the indecent human behavior. But when it finally was his turn at the counter, he saw a golden opportunity. He knew exactly how to teach them a lesson. Friday evening donuts used to be a been a long-standing ritual for Hunter and Lara when they were dating. But now that Lara was pregnant, things had gone full tilt. The need for sprinkles and cream filling was paramount. This particular night, Hunter watched her hunger pangs go off the charts. There was just one problem. And it would soon spiral into something unimaginable. Lara and her husband Hunter were not impulsive people. In fact, they were completely straight-laced, hard-working citizens. And lately, they had found themselves in a comfortable but predictable routine. They would get up at 5, go to work, arrive home at 8, and watch a mind-numbing show on TV, so exhausted at the end of the day that they barely spoke to one another anymore. Nobody could have predicted what havoc they were about to cause. Lara and Hunter had just begun unwinding after a long day of work when a powerful sugar craving hit him. Ravenous and with no food except popcorn in the apartment due to their busy schedules, Hunter began dreaming of the only thing that would satisfy his craving, jelly filling, powdered sugar, and Boston cream. He looked at his wife and impulsively declared, let's go and pick up some donuts. Lara, delighted that they were going to finally get out of the house and drive somewhere together, enthusiastically agreed. But there was already a problem. It was already 8.30 p.m. The only place that served donuts this late was downtown. They'd just make it if they hurried, and they'd have to brave some hellish traffic to get there. But, by now the craving had taken hold of Lara too. She needed a sugary ball of fried dough, and God help whoever stood in her way. She felt like a teenager as they ran to the car, giggling as they sped off. It was supposed to be Madeline's Bakery on 5th. They were famous for their Boston creams. Hunter could see the saliva accumulate around Lara's lips, like a bloodhound inches from a juicy sausage. But as they pulled up to the small mom and pop shop, they couldn't believe their eyes. It should have been open for at least another hour, but the taped note saying they were closed early because of an emergency punched them in the gut. Lara's hormones were already making her tear up. Hunter pulled out his phone and looked for alternatives. New drama was only minutes away. With determination, Hunter traversed the dark streets until they came to the only other bakery near them that would still be open. To their dismay, it was filled with cars and other people who also craved a late-night sugar fix. Still, they had driven all the way here and had a few minutes to spare before this bakery closed. They had to find a parking space, and quickly. Magically, a spot opened up right in front of them. Clearly, the parking gods were smiling on the couple as Hunter happily flicked his indicator on and prepared to carefully reverse into the space. But disaster was about to strike. He never even saw them coming. A tiny car full of young, loud girls appeared out of nowhere, raced up to the empty spot, and swooped in before Hunter even realized what was happening. He slammed on the brakes as the girl's car came to a screeching halt. He felt the hairs on his neck stand up and the muscles in his face clench. So rude. Who did they think they were? He rolled down his window to give the women an earful, but got a slap in the face instead. Excuse me, we were just backing in, Hunter called out to the girls, trying to keep calm. Too bad. Your name wasn't on it, the young driver replied with a nasty, smug smirk. The girls piled out and laughed in his face as they walked past. Stunned by the rude girl's audacity and blatant disregard for anyone else, he told Lara to scoot over and take the wheel. Still seething, he directed her to pick him up at the donut shop in five minutes as he ran to the bakery on foot. The delicious smell of fried dough and icing hit him as he walked in, with his mouth watering now that he was so close to finally getting what he'd driven all the way here for. But the bakery was absolutely packed. Hunter watched the shelves of donuts emptying as person after person in front of him scooped them up. He had almost forgotten about the rude girls as he prayed that there would be two donuts left when he got to the front. Then, someone jostled him from behind. Hunter felt his jaw clench as someone rudely jostled and crowded behind him, so close to him that he could feel hot breath on his neck. Balling his fists and with his sugar low only aggravating his irritation, he heard a voice from behind and immediately recognized it and his eyes narrowed. It was the girl who had cut him off. He stood quietly seething until it was finally his turn. Suddenly, he smiled his sweetest smile at the cashier and took his revenge. 
He whipped his head around quickly, but the girls were prattling so loudly at each other that they didn't even notice him. Thank God we got a parking spot, one said before they all erupted with screeches of laughter. Their voices grated on his nerves, but he composed himself, checked his wallet, and cleared his throat. It was time for their comeuppance. Hunter savored the satisfying rush as he pulled out his card and made his order. As the cashier filled his box, the jeering came to an abrupt halt. If steam could come out of human ears, the young woman behind him would have been a whistling tea kettle. Her face had turned bright red and her hands into tight fists. I'll take them all, Hunter said loudly so that the girls could hear, all two dozen donuts. That had gotten the entitled girl's attention. The rude driver, voicing her displeasure at not getting what she wanted, began to have a tantrum like a spoiled child. What, you're not even going to save a few for us, she petulantly yelled at the cashier, he can't do that. We've been waiting. That was exactly what Hunter had been waiting for. He knew her type. He whipped around with childish glee and couldn't contain himself. It was too poetic. Too bad. Your name wasn't on it. Hunter smugly shot back. And the look of thunder on the girl's faces almost made the entire annoying ordeal worth it. He paid, grabbed his bag of donuts, and sauntered past the awful teenagers, with a spring in his step and a satisfying sense of justice in his heart. Little did he know, his partner in crime wife, who he had left in the parking lot, was bus serving up an extra helping of justice. Hunter waited for Lara outside the bakery, but she was nowhere in sight. He took his phone out of his pocket and called her. Where are you? he asked cheerily. In our parking spot, she replied, giggling uncontrollably. Hunter was confused for a second, but then it dawned on him. He walked up to the girl's car. And, sure enough, there was Lara. He began to bellow with laughter. Hunter walked up to their car, laughing maniacally. He leaned in and gave his wonderful wife a kiss through the open window when he saw what she was doing. What had she done? It turned out that Lara had indeed found their parking spot, right behind the Mini Cooper. But things didn't end there. Lara had parked their car right behind the girl's car, effectively parking them in. Hunter told her what had happened in the bakery and she laughed so hard she snorted. It was far more donuts than they needed, but it was totally worth it. The last hooray came when they spotted a police car pulling the girl over for her speedy departure. Best night ever. His wife was already a force to be reckoned with. But someone had tried to come between her and her cravings. This meant war. Another loud honk came from the small car and the girls yelled for them to move. Lara grabbed a strawberry jelly and stuffed it into her mouth. Hunter knew what to do next. He settled into the passenger's seat, selected an old-fashioned glazed, and crammed it into his smiling face. He pointed to the box and then flashed the thumbs up. So good. The couple giggled like silly kids as the other car exploded with petulant rage. Which just made them laugh all the harder. Hunter and Lara sat giggling like a couple of teenagers and rolled up their windows, ignoring the furious hooting and the catty girl's indignant cries. Hunter handed Lara a jelly donut from the bag, and she could have sworn that she'd never tasted anything sweeter. They leisurely ate two donuts each, enjoying the spectacle behind them and reveling in the mischief they'd caused. Revenge had never felt so good. When the last bites went down and fingers were licked, they finally pulled away and let the cooper squeal down the road.